is going to be scrolling without a pattern. And you're saying, why? Freestyle for scrolling. Well, I'm going to say this. If you can do it, you're going to gain confidence. You're going to feel better. And I think then when you use a pattern, you'll do better. Scrolling without a pattern is no different right now. It's no different than these people wood turning because they really don't have a pattern and that's where I'm kind of getting getting this from a little bit I mean they've got a general idea of what they want they want to turn it to a certain certain size or, or diameter or a certain length or whatever it is so what I did is this program we're gonna do four by six furniture puzzle box name one cut box and jigsaw we're gonna do that tonight so it's gonna be a fast and furious night and it should be fun. This is what I call a four and a six puzzle, okay? So I'm gonna take this block of wood. It's got one flat side, supposedly that's fine. Okay, now, what I'm doing is basically taking this block, I'm gonna cut, I'm on this, I'm on this, I'm on this face. I'll get better. I'm gonna be on this face. I'm gonna cut my hooks on this end and my hooks on this end. Because when I turn it, I'm going to put my hooks in the middle. If you notice on the thing on the board, what does it say? Four by six. It says side, side one I do the hooks on the end, side two I do it on the middle. Okay? And the reason I do that, if you don't, what happens is the hooks go on top of each other when you do the three dimensional cutting and then it becomes all pieces, all little pieces. So here goes. And this is what I call a dog, dog bone. And then over here, you can do whatever you want to do. You know, I'm sawing this nice straight line. So now I'm going to come in on the other side, finish my dog bone. Now, the only thing I have to watch out for is I don't want to cross that line I just cut. Okay, now I've cut one side. I've cut one side. Okay, see how that see how that piece looks like a dog bone? Why I call it a dog bone? Okay, now what I'm going to do? I don't do it, but you could do it if you wanted to. You could wrap some tape on it so it wouldn't move on you. I cut so many of these that it it just slowed me up. Okay, now what I said is I cut here and here. I cut my puzzle piece. Okay. What I want to do now is my puzzle piece is going to be here where my finger is in the middle so I don't so I don't just create a bunch of small pieces. So what I'm going to do is come in. I'm now past the I'm just I'm on the other side I'm past those hooks. So now what I'm going to do is make another puzzle piece. Okay, so I'm going, going basically straight out. Okay, so now I have six piece puzzle. You can do multiple variations off of this using the same principle as long as you put your hooks on the end on one face and hooks in the middle on the second face. Does everybody understand what I'm saying by the Okay? When you say a hook, is that, that just that little curvy thing that you just Yeah, the whole, that holds it together. Okay. If, the, if, if I were to put them on top of each other, that hook would go away because I'd cut it away. We'll do it one more time. It probably won't be as fast as Steve does on his videos, but we'll, we'll do it. See, I'm doing the hooks on the end. That keeps it together. That keeps the puzzle together on the end. I don't care what I do in the middle here. I can move all over the place, okay? So now I'm going to do another hook on this end to keep that puzzle together. Now I'm going to do the same thing going this way. Now 
Now how many pieces do you have back there, ma'am? I know you don't have that many fingers on one hand, but... Okay, now, so that was going one direction. Now we're going to go the other way, but we're going to do a little twist in it this time. What we're going to do is I'm going to make sure I start up real close to one edge, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the whole nomenclature of the puzzle just a little bit by making one more cut in it. Which increases the difficulty of it uh, quite a bit from the standpoint of putting it back together. Because what I'm going to do now is go the other direction. Long as I put that puzzle piece in the middle, it won't counteract the piece that's on the other side and won't, won't break it loose. And now it's a separate piece by itself and it's not a problem. See, this one's got three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That just increased it a little bit. How many people have done that? Okay, just, hey, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, if you try it and do it, you're going to develop confidence in doing that, which will help you follow your patterns better later on. If you're more free form and do it. Okay, let's get another piece, another piece of wood. Okay, now this is the fun one to do. This is especially fun to do for those people out there that have granddaughters or little or you know in that in that right age you can be you can be the best buddy with them. This is called making furniture. This is furniture 101. And you saw this big piece of wood I'm using which is, you know, Okay, we're going to even do it with, we'll do it with this, this piece. So there's, there's our block of wood. Okay, I'm going to make at least one three-dimensional object out of this with no pattern. Okay, so what I'm going to do, try to listen to what I'm saying and you'll understand what I'm trying to do. First, what I'm going to do is out of this, this is going to be chairs, tables, uh, television set and flat screen TVs in a hassock is all going to come out of here when I get done. And I'm going to, no reason I'm telling you ahead of time is so you can see why the cuts are made and you can make anything. You can make two chairs, you can make a table and chairs, you can make a rocking chair, whatever you want it to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do, my first cut, and, and kind of imagine this as I cut it, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting Look at the chair in front of you. I am cutting one side of that bottom of that chair out. Everybody see that? The chair that's in front of you. See, I've cut the bottom out. That's the chair. If you're looking at a chair, that's looking at one angle of that chair, see? Okay, now, what I want to do is I'm going to come in this way and I'm going to cut this way, I'm going to cut a table. So now I'm going to cut a table. So I cut a table. Now what I'm going to do is cut another table. This, I probably shouldn't use this wedge that's on the bottom because you, you don't need that wedge on the bottom. It just was there in the wood and I just left it. Okay, so now I've cut two tables in there, okay? Now, right here, you see the semblance of a chair? Everybody see the semblance of the chair? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to cut the rest of that chair out. So I'm going to cut this way. And I'm a funny guy, so I'm going to make this. This needs to be a fancy chair, so I'm going to make this to be a tufted back chair. So to be tufted back chair, I don't want a straight back. So I'm going to make it tufted back.
Okay, now I've got to cut the other way because it's three dimensional cutting. Now what am I going to cut? The only thing I haven't cut is I've got to cut the bottom of the chair looking the other direction. So that's what I'm going to cut now. Okay, now, so what we have, we have one chair, we have a side table, we have a coffee table, we have an ottoman, okay, we have the old-fashioned TV set with the rabbit ears, okay, then you notice this is the tufted chair, this is our chiropractic table after we've been sawing all day long. Okay. And then here's our two flat screen TVs. But you can, but, but all of that, just think about it. Instead of, instead of looking at a pattern and whatever, just think of that pattern. Like if you do two chairs, what you've got to do is think about, okay, I've got to make the bottom some way, so I've got to keep the block intact, and you work on one side and work on the other, and you can do two chairs. And table. But I'm saying, do it. I'll tell you, think about it. If you had your granddaughter in front of you and you made that for her, what would she think of you? On this puzzle, a puzzle box. This is going to be a puzzle box, okay? which can be any block of wood. My only constraint is what? It can't be thicker than two inches. Except I could use a piece of wood two and a quarter inches thick because my first transaction would be cutting off the side so then I would be small enough to fit under the blade to cut the rest of it. But I don't want to cut that big a block tonight with you guys. But anyway, so my pattern for this is for the puzzle box. We're not using pattern. Yeah, but my pattern that I'm going to use here, I have to have steps, just like you do when you turn and do your stuff. So my steps are back, key, front puzzle, drill, cut out, cut top, step, step. That's what I'm going to do. And if you, if you copy that down, you'll be able to make this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil, and this is just, this is just to help. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to draw one line here, and I'm going to draw one line there. That allows me to know to put that back because I've got to put all these pieces I'm going to cut apart and then I want to put them all back together. So this allows me to find out how I want to put them back together. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is cut the back. I'm going to cut the back off of my box. So all I'm doing is going to cut whatever I want. And I don't have to worry about the size so I'm just going to cut off, cut off about a, cut off a quarter of an inch. It doesn't really make any difference. It's telling me I it's telling me I'm sawing too fast. It just keeps flopping on me, telling me I'm you're trying to saw too fast. Be patient. I'm using a five. I'm using my bread and butter blade. And I probably should be using a pole arm, but... Okay, that's our bottom. And see, I drew the pencil line so I can see how it goes back together. Okay, so now I'm going to put this over here. Okay. Now what do I have to do? It says back, I gotta do a key. So I've gotta make a key in my box. So here's the bottom, so I'm gonna put it down and we're gonna create a key for this box. Now, oh, February's Valentine's Day. Let's make a, let's make a, let's make a heart key. Okay, so there's my key. I should have checked this saw, make sure it was flush, but I think it's pretty good. Okay, now that's my key. Now what do I need to do? It says, 
front puzzle. Okay, so what I've got to do now is I've got to take the front off and I'm going to raise it so the key's in front of me because what I want to do is I need to make a locking tab on this part. But I don't want that locking tab to be in where my key is, okay? And if I do it on this side, it doesn't make any difference. The key's going to be all the way through. So I, I'd rather have this on the top so I know where this is so I don't, don't mess it up. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to come in. So I'm going to make a key real early. Not a key, I'm going to make a tab real early. So I'm basically taking another quarter. I'm in. Now what I'm going to do is just turn. Come back this way. Turn again. Okay, so now I did all that right in front of my, what I call the key I, that I cut before. So I did that on one side. So now it's all the way through and it doesn't affect that key at all. Now should I put another key on this, should I put another tab on this side? Oh, another, okay, I have to put another tab on this side, okay. I'll put another tab on this side, that's what they want. You know, like I said, I'm not following a pattern, so I can do what I want. Because when it's done, it's exact. It came out exactly like I wanted it. Okay, so there's my top. And am I going to have a problem? Probably. You might have trouble when you put it together with your first key. Now I'm going to have problems right now because the thing's not, well, not 90 degrees. See what my problem is? My problem is this. See, the first thing I should have done is come over here and did this. Watch. This is where you have a problem. Okay, I drill that in, and going this way, you will see, um, camera angle, you will see my blade is not straight. My table's not 90 degrees. Not 90 degrees, so it's going to cause me a problem. See, the table's loose. That's nice. You must have to live with it. I'll have to figure out some way. That looks better right there. You see what I'm doing? Everybody understand what I'm doing by doing this? I should have done this when? Before I started cutting. And I told myself to do that. I'm just happy you got it right before I go up there. <laughs> yeah, but you'll have those stupid blades in there. Mine are educated. I don't even know if I can get this out. Can you rerun it? Maybe. I think that's probably a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Somebody in the front front said, well, you know, I can just maybe maybe I can rerun it and maybe I can get it to It's not gonna look as good, but But see, even even when you're a presenter up here, you always screw up. But now my pattern, the instructions told me to do it like this. Did you see the instructions? I saw the instructions and it told me to do this. This made, if nothing else, it made it wide enough that it should allow it to come out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. Okay, so now we have this block. Okay, so what we have to do now 
is, remember, we took off the bottom and we took off the top. So what we've got is the inside of the box and the sides. So what I need to do now is I'm going to come over here to the drill press and I'm going to put a hole in here. Don't put your hole down here at the end. Don't put your hole down here at the end and I'll tell you why later. If you can, put your hole probably closer to where this tab is. Hopefully I got a long enough drill. I do. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm cutting the inside of the box out. But what I have to do is I have to go around this tab and keep it intact. Okay? So we're going to start, I'll start on the top. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because all I'm going to do is go here and keep that keep that tab that I made for the key intact and then whatever I leave on the outside that's the outside of my box now I'm going to come over here And you could do you could do something fancy if you wanted to, but I'm trying to make the biggest cavity on the inside of this box that I possibly can. If you've got questions, ask them. I just can't look up and see your hand, just ask it. Okay, so there's my inside of my box. Okay, now we did the back, we did the key, we did the front puzzle, I drilled, I did the cutout. Now I've got to cut the top. So I've got to cut this top. And what I want to do is cut this top below my tab holes. So I'm going to cut my top. And it's basically going to be a straight cut. I'm going to cut right across here. Be careful when you're cutting this because you're going to cut some void. You're going to come into a void. Remember you got the void where that key was. Okay, so now there's my top. Okay, now we got one thing left. Step, step. Okay, what I need is that top is going to sit in my box. But if I put it in my box right now, if, I, if, if this was in the bottom and I put this in my box, this goes all the way to the bottom of the box. See how it goes all the way to the bottom of the box? So, you know, I have just uh, astronomically check this out, measurements and everything else, but if I cut this corner off of here and this corner off of here, it'll be exactly the right size to fill that, fill that void in the box. So if I make a step off of this side, okay, and I make a step off of this side, Now, when I put my box together, we'll see. Okay, here's the bottom. <coughs> and I got my pencil lines. And so that lines up. There's my bottom. Then these are my steps. I take my steps, I put them in here, and I would glue them on the sides. 
Okay, now I've got my inside piece, right? My top. I lay it in there like that. Okay, now I got my cover, which will be here. And I put in the key. There's your puzzle box. But see, that's no pattern. So that means you can make it out of anything. You can, your only configuration you're lost on is you can't get bigger than two inches. But you can make long ones, like right here. This would make a perfect one if you wanted to, you know, a long one. And you can put, you can put, you know, you can make this long and thin, and you could have two cavities on the inside. You wouldn't just have to have make one cavity. You could make two separate cavities. So when they open that top box up and come up, there's going to be two separate little cavities. But what I'm saying, neat little boxes to use with, you know, took a lot of wood to make this. Anybody wants to pass? It's not glued together, so just pass it around like that and you can look at it. Okay, next I need, I need you, I need you up here. Yep, I'm pointing at you. I need your help. I need your help. This is, this is easy. This is easy. I need... You're just, she's just, great. she's just gullible. She sits, hey, that's what happens when you sit in the back row on my things. Here's a pin. I would like you, and I think it'd be easier if I do it right, if I do it right here, then the cameraman can see it too. What I would like you to do, is, as big as you can, I would like you to write your name right there. Oh, God, I don't write anymore. You, okay, you print? That's, yes, hey, you print, that's fine. I have no problems. Just like, just my name. Your right name. But I'm saying, you know, make it, make it fairly large. Make, you know, make it about this large if you can. I mean, I know your name's only an A. That could be tough. I mean. Like that? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, that'd be good. So now, you can do this with anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a name. No pattern. This is where this is where it takes the skill of the scroll star because sometimes sometimes these people make these names and they get really tough. Okay, what I'm going to do there's, there's there's a couple ways to do this. She put a dead center in the middle so it's not toward the bottom. If there's there's two ways of doing this. If she had put it down and let's say pretend that this was the line that she was drawing on and drew the name down, then what I could cut around is I could cut around the outside edge. And I would create a, I would create a three-dimensional nameplate. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. It's going to come out of the middle instead of coming out of the end and top and bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come over here, and what I'm going to do is I've got to pretend now she's created a pattern for me. I've never seen this pattern before. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to play and pretend I cut it, I bisected, I bisected her name right down the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one side of that name coming from this way and I'm going to cut the other side from the other side from the from the top. And to be honest with you, it's much easier if they do if they do uh, cursive writing versus versus this. <laughs> it's a lot easier because you got you don't the other one is all together, so you don't have any, you don't have all these parts to contend with. But it'll still come out. How many people have done this? Come on guys, somebody raise their hand. Just help me out. Is this something nobody would do so I shouldn't be teaching it? Yeah, I know you've done that. You've done beautiful. And uh, by what 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 font are you using for that? That's what you wanted to know, remember? 
what font he was using. Sorry I can't saw faster guys. I'll try and I'll probably mess it up. Okay. There's her name. Did it come out okay? Yeah. And if you don't like it that way, we can do it this way. And then what you can do is kids could take it out, they could take that Instead of using magic marker on it, you could have used a, they could have used a pencil on it, and then they could take this piece out, paint it, put it back in, get it where they want it. No, I can't put it back in. Get it where they want it. Get it where they want it, and then what you do is I tell them like, let's say that's where they want it. Then take a hot glue gun, doom doom doom, put a couple pieces of glue, and that's where it stays. All right. Good. I go home and do it for all my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got seven. <laughs> <laughs> you started. So you haven't seen that one before? No. Okay. The other one, let's just see if I could do it fast. The one I was going to do fast. Let's see if I can do one fast here. Um, This one's not, the quality's not going to be good on this one, but I just want to, and see, you can do, you can do something like this on the top if you want. I'm going to have a problem here, aren't I? Oh, I can get out of here. Okay. There's my block of wood. What I'm saying on this one, I'm far enough down, so what I can do is I can come out here and go like this. This guy that wrote this is pitiful. This one's not going to be good. I'm just trying to show you the, another prospect of this. See, instead of doing like that one, I went all the way around it. You don't have to. If, you, if they do it close to the bottom, you can do it like this. See, and then it gives it a second. It gives it a variation. And if you well, and if also if you did did two laminates, and then when you did it, it would now be laminate on the top. Okay, another thing you can do out of scrap is you can make boxes. No different. We did the name. I'm going to do the one cut. You can do a box. And a box, basically, what you're doing is how many people have pieces of wood like this or like this in your shop? Okay. What you can do is you can make boxes out of these. Okay, all you do is, is cut this and, and you do the same principle of that is, is take this and then glue it to a piece. And I'll show you, but I'm running out of time because I've got something else I want to do. I'm going to do this. I think you'd rather see this. I've got to find some puzzle blades. Here they are. I've got to find a puzzle blade. Okay, now, this is my most fun thing to do. And this is my, this is called totally freestyle. This is taking a picture and I'm going to do what they call a one cut puzzle. Okay? Basically what I'm doing is coming in in one spot 
and coming out in another spot, but never ever crossing my cut. I'm only going to make one cut in this. But I'm going to make I'm going to make a puzzle that there ain't another one like it anywhere in the world ever. So here goes. And you can ask any questions you got on this one. That's going to take me just a second to cut. I like to kind of start in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is go down this way. I'm going to go down this way and we're going to go this way a little bit. Then we're going to go this way a little bit. We're going to go back down here. Let's go down up here. Then we'll come down over here. We're going to go over here. We're going to go over here. What I'm kind of doing is you, you can go, you want to probably go clockwise or counterclockwise because you don't want to recut. You know, you don't want to go back over your cut. This is so thin, George, I may have, I'd almost have to slow it down. <laughs> it's so thin, it, it's, 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 it's getting ahead of me and what happened is the, the thing is jumping on me. See, it's so much easier for this type of stuff. I'm used to used to doing stack cutting and more cuts, but then you'd have two exactly the same. And see, what I'm doing is making sure, as he sees in the cam uh, camera, I'm not going over anything. Can everybody see that? I can't see what's on the screen. Okay. See, and then I'm going to go this way, and then I'll come this way. I mean, this takes a lot of talent, guys. I mean, just a lot of talent to follow these, follow these lines. Does everybody get the concept of what I'm doing? Okay, I went in right here. And I'm going to come out right there. You got a two piece puzzle. So now I got a two piece puzzle. Okay. But now. Three pieces. Four pieces. Five. Six. Seven. I don't I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm trying to the camera's right there, so I'm trying to Not another one like it. And it's not that difficult to do. Since it was Valentine's Day, and everybody's got scrap like this, right? I mean, they got scrap like this. Okay? Okay, now, so it's Valentine's Day. Let's make a heart shaped box. I don't have a pattern. I can't find a pattern. Well, let's make a heart shaped box. So here goes. Looks close enough. Five seven. seven. I put a seven polar in it so I could cut a little bit. Okay, so there's our box. There's our start of our box, okay? So what I want to do is I've got to drill the outside. 
So I'm drilling the outside. What I'm going to do is now cut the inside of my box out. Peyton? Why don't you cut the top and bottom off of this one first? I'm going to do it a different way. I'm doing a different style. I'm going to do a different style. Because I'm not making a puzzle box. And also, it, it would be... Okay? The other reason is, is if I do it that way, I'm limited on how big I can make the box because I now have to cut it. Unless I go use a bandsaw or something else. See, this way I'm not, this way I'm only limited on depth of the box of two inches. Okay? I can make any size box I want out of any scrap of wood I have, any length, any size. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting out the inside of my box. If you'll notice, I'm, I'm leaving a pretty good amount of wood on the outside of my box. And that's the reason I didn't do what you said of, of leaving the bottom like that because of that factor. Okay, so now, so now I've got this here. Okay, now, all of you have wood like this at home too. What I'm going to do now is, is put the hot melt on here and then glue this to here. Now that gives me a bottom, okay? I've left myself plenty of room on the outside of this heart because now what I'm going to do once this heart is adhered to this back then I'm going to cut out and I'm going to cut the heart and the bottom at the same time so they'll exactly match. I can either do it one of two ways. I could trace the inside of the box onto the piece of wood and that will give me a inside top okay and if I trace the outside then I can do an over a lid type box remember you'll all do a lot better when you don't have to stand in front of me and you're against against the running against the time schedule okay so now what I'm going to do I've glued I've glued this onto the bottom of that normally I'd use regular glue and let it set and wait and clamp it or whatever and I'm gonna cut it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here I want a nice point on my heart so now I'm gonna make my nice point on my heart What I'm doing is I'm cutting the box side and I'm cutting the bottom at the same time so therefore it's going to match. Then I could use. Then you only have to make one pass around the outside. Okay. Or one step. Or if I cut this, or if I cut this piece here, and I cut. If I come over here, it's just another way of doing it. If I come over here and take this, and this one's going to be tougher to cut. Okay, now there's, there's my inside if I wanted an ins 
If I wanted an inside cover, that's going to exactly match. See, then I had my cover on top, I had a cover on top, it would do it, see. But now I'm going to do it the other way, the longer way. But see, there's many ways to do it, because there's no pattern. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come in here and draw this outside. Okay, so now I've got that drawn on there. So let's just cut that out of there. Okay, now, that line represents what? The outside edge, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drill a hole right there, okay? Okay, so now what I'm going to do Okay, now, for those that know what I'm doing, what piece is my throwaway? Say again. Piece you cut out. What piece is my throwaway? The solid heart. The heart. Okay. So at least somebody following me a little bit. And those that aren't will catch up. Like hot glue is hot. Okay. Okay, so now what I've got to do is I want the outside edge of my of my box or the lid. So what I've got to do is come in here. And when I, when I laid this on the wood, I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room for a, for a lid. That's what you got, and that's if it worked. And you, it takes a little bit, be a little sanding, but I'm trying to do it in front of you and fasten it. What I did, the problem I did, is this after I cut it out, I put it on backwards, and by putting it on backwards, it it changed the changed the relationship from left to right, and I knew it as soon as it glued. But when you use hot milk, you don't have much choice. But anyway, so that's making a box. Now, Rob is going to show us how to do jigsaw puzzles. And in his case, there's no pattern either. 
Now all you're gonna have to have on a puzzle piece is an interlocking tab. Just something so it won't pull apart and it'll be on here. And like on here, instead of going straight across for a picture, I just wanted to go with something around the name Jigsaw. But when you got a face over there, you don't want to cut through the middle of their eyes. You know, you want to cut like around the head. If you go through the neck or the top or anything, it's okay. You know, and I have little kids that want me to cut mommy's head. You know. So it's a really easy process and sort of like his uh he did on the one cut scrolling. What I normally do is I'll start in a position like right here and I'll cut down just one tab and another and all the way across and then I'll come back and do the one sideways. Sort of like his one way cut where you go on one cut, you go all the way through and then you make the separate tabs. Okay. <laughs> okay. My problem. I like that. <laughs> if I can see to do it. Okay. So I'm going to go in with just a nice smooth curve. I am going to do a separate piece this time instead of going straight down the line. Yeah, well, instead of a strip cut. I normally, when I'm cutting them out there when I'm at the show, I'll cut all the way down and then I'll cut, cut them across. This way I'm just going to show you. And it all is a normal puzzle piece like the little kids would have in a puzzle. And when I'm at the show, I normally set it next to me and I put the next one with it at that time because I don't want to wait till the end to put them all together. But for some reason it takes me 10 minutes to put it together and 5 minutes to cut it. But It doesn't matter which way you make the tabs. You can make the tabs large, small. I don't always make the pieces the same. You know, on the next piece it will go a little different. Sometimes you may only make 10 pieces. Well, that's what you got to find out before you cut the piece. If you want to find out ahead of time, if it's for like a four-year-old, five-year-old, ten-year-old. So anyway, it's really easy to do. I brought a bunch of wood. So if anybody wants to practice a couple up here, these are without a picture on it. It's no harder with or without a picture. Now the only difference is, when you deal with a picture, like I said, you're dealing with the facial features. But when I'm, I'll go up here in a couple minutes and... Now I'm going right through his eyes. Oh, a straight blade? No, that wouldn't hurt a pitcher. Anyway. It looks a whole lot smoother than that way when you're cutting like that. With a straight blade, you're twisting that thing back. Yeah, well, I, I started off with straight blades. And after a couple months, I wanted to do portraits where you're doing so many, you're depicting somebody's hair or something. So you're doing a little jagged edge here, here. So after that, you know, after a couple months, I decided I'm going to do it with uh, spiral blades. I started cutting, I'm all over the place. It's like shooting pool with a rope. You know, you got absolutely no control. So I forced myself to do it with uh, spiral blades. And now I'm at the point I just plain can't do it with a straight blade. Well, you gotta kind of get a rhythm going. You know, when you're making that circle, it's almost like you're trying to get a curve. If you go and you stop, then you're gonna end up with like points and shagging. So I just try to get a flow going with it and I do it. Two out. Two Yeah. Well, the thing with using a spiral blade, you've got the kerf all the way around it. So when you cut, you're going to end up with a wider kerf and it's a sloppier puzzle. But if you're making one for kids, you're better off having a little sloppy. You want to have it tight where they can't get it together. And it really doesn't matter what shape you make. You don't have to make perfect squares. Like you were saying, was it last week? that you turn your pattern over? No, but I use, I use a grid. I, 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 yeah, but you put the grid on the back, right? I put the grid on the back yeah. so I'm upside down. Right, but the reason you put the grid on the black is so, back is so you can see this to space it out. And it doesn't really matter if you're perfect squares as long as you have the interlocking tabs. Right. Okay.